Hello and welcome to HD Piano. My name's Devin and this is How to Play Never Break by John Legend. Three, four. To the verse. Skipping ahead to the pre-chorus. stop there. We're going to be focusing in this video on just that intro, verse, and pre-chorus. But of course, over at hdpiano.com, we'll be learning the rest of the song from top to bottom. So if you're not there already, I hope you can join me there after this. Okay. Well, I was listening to John Legend's latest record, and I was getting a little worried because I was not hearing much piano. Don't abandon us, John. But then finally, that last track, he really came through with this one, Never Break, the ultimate anthem super fun, super powerful piano part, and I'm excited to get right to it. So first things first, I want to just give you a lay of the land. Um, it might look a little complex. You know, my hands like crossing over, got my thumbs all doing this little thumb war here. At its core, very simple pop piano approach. And I just want you to kind of have a nice clear visual for what's going on. We're in the key of E. And our first chord is E5, just root, fifth, and root. And then we have E major seven, that's that D sharp. So that top note moves down to D sharp. And then we go to C sharp. And then we take that B to A. So that's the core harmonic skeleton. So you could, you could get away with just playing that for the whole intro and verse, uh, outro, all the verses and stuff, um, right? So, it, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be as complex as it might look. Anyways, that's what's going on at the core. That's what we call a line cliche. When you kind of isolate a note in a set of chords and you create like an interior melody. We see it in the pre-chorus too. Watch the bass line. Very little changes to the right hand. It's that bass line that's really defining it. So it's that line cliche. So what's going on in the right hand when we put it all together? I'll slow it down. I'm playing eighth notes with my thumb, but quarter notes with my pinky. And those are both Bs. So thumb is an ostinato on B, meaning just a repeated note. And the pinky is just one, two, three, four. Now I want you to try going between that rhythm and this rhythm. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. That's the first little quiz here. Going between one, two, three, four, and one and two and three and four. We're gonna see a lot of both of those rhythms in the right hand. So you want to be able to transition fluidly between what I'll call the quarter note ostinato and the pop clave with the ostinato. That's that rhythm. One and two and three, four. Call that the pop clave. So the left hand covers up the right hand here. We've got E and E. And we're going to play that pop clave in the left, just the first two notes, while the right hand plays quarter notes. So one and two and three, four. Again, here we go. And one and two and three, four. Now take it down to D sharp, same thing. And one, two, and three, four. Down to C sharp. Now in this measure, the hands hit together. So the right hand switches to pop clave. So that's the intro, and it's really cool. And the way it sounds on the recording, it's like, you're almost like, whoa, are there like four hands playing that part? And I'm pretty sure it's just this. So. And you want to bring out the left hand, actually. I was kind of drowning it out there. Pop 
Bob Clave. And three, four, and one. All right, that's the intro. So we've got the ostinato in the right, in the thumb. Quarter notes, for the most part, in the pinky. And the left hand's playing the pop clave. Then we switch over to the verse, and we commit to the pop clave in both hands. Um, left hand's just doing the first two notes. So one, and two, and three, and four. 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 All right, so the left hand's playing two notes, walking down with the thumb, and then in the final measure, adding the A. And we combine that with the right hand, and we get this lovely part. We're going to repeat that one more time. To D sharp. To C sharp. To A. B, C sharp, D sharp, boom. And we land at the pre-chorus on a C sharp minor chord. Okay, so at this point, we've only seen this E in the left. It's been a very, like, steady harmonic bed. And then pre-chorus launches us into our first kind of new chord with a new bass line. So C sharp in the left, G sharp, C sharp, and E in the right. And there's one other term I want to make sure you're familiar with. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start coming in a little more in the second video, but arpeggio. Um, and inversion. So basically with a chord like this, C sharp minor, G sharp, C sharp, E, we're going to see a lot of throughout this song where we hit a chord and then we just kind of move around within the notes. So and it can be in any order. And so that's called arpeggiating within the chord. Um, and we're also going to see inversions. And an inversion real quick is just where you take the bottom note up an octave, or take the top note down an octave, right? Same three notes, same set of notes, just in a different order. If you want to learn more about key of E major, C sharp minor, and inversions and chords and all that, you can check out hdpiano.com slash KSE for key signature essentials. It goes over all this stuff in detail, but just know that I will be dropping those terms a lot throughout this lesson. So the pre-chorus. Beautiful. Let's learn these chords first, and then we'll add in the interior motion. C sharp minor, C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, and E. And then we have this beautiful G sharp 7 over B sharp. So that's the root position 7th chord, G sharp, B sharp, D sharp, and F sharp. We're just going to drop that C natural, or that B sharp, and put it in the left. Such a classic progression here. And then we go to basically E over B, but we're adding this D sharp, which means it's E major 7, right? Root position, first inversion, second inversion, over B in the left. And then we, uh, our final chord is F sharp 7. Same idea as what we did here. We're dropping that second note and putting it in the left. We get A sharp, F sharp, C sharp, and E. So you could play the pre-chorus just going boom, pardon my terrible beatboxing, I'm not sure it even qualifies as beatboxing. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's the simple approach, and the next step would be to add that interior motion. So arpeggiating down, and then up to D sharp, E, and then to the chord. We are playing the chord and then pointer thumb chord pointer thumb E F sharp chord and here you could you could just improvise something like that just based on where your hand is but I believe what John Legend actually plays is one and two and three and four and one so he kind of adjusts his position chord and then B G 
G sharp, E, B, G sharp, E, left hand, B, to our F sharp 7 over A sharp chord. And that's the pre-chorus, and then that leads us into the chorus. Okay, I'll go ahead and just play that pre-chorus together nice and slow, and then I think you should have the whole song, or this whole section, uh, ready to go. And we'll see you over at part two after that. So here we go. Three and four. All right, great job making it this far. If you're already at hdpiano.com, go ahead and click on part two to continue learning. And if you're not, head on over and you can get started learning the rest of this song. In the meantime, please send us your song ideas at requests.hdpiano.com. Follow us on social media so you can stay in the know about our upcoming lessons. And if you're on YouTube, drop us a comment below, like, subscribe. We love hearing from you guys. My name's Devin with hdpiano.com. We'll see you soon.